Today we'll be making light streaks like this. They're very ephemeral and super fast to render in Blender's EV Render Engine. We'll be setting the sampling down to 1 for viewport and render. And we'll start off by adding a plane. Shift A to enter. And select a plane to add. And we'll go up here to texture paint. You'll notice that it's pink purple at the moment. That's because there's no texture applied to the surface. We're going to make a new image. I'll just call it dots or shape. Leave everything as it is. Zoom that out a little bit and we're in paint mode. Let's paint a shape. Press N on the keyboard, pick a nice color, maybe blue. Let's draw a shape on here, maybe a love heart. And the first thing to remember is that we need to save this out. So let's go to here. See there's an asterisk saying it's an unsaved image. We'll go save as, and we'll call it dot shape and save. Now it's a sh saved image and there's no more asterisks. That's great. We'll go back to our layout mode. Let's have a look at the shader editor. So I'm clicking and dragging to separate a new window. We'll go down to the shader editor. Click new. I don't need this principled BSDF. Delete that. But I would like, by pressing Control T, I have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled. So if I press Control T, it adds for me the image texture. G to drag that across. I'm going to select dot shape from the drop down. Leave everything as it is from the UV mapping. And if we change this to rendered view, you can see there's our little love heart on the screen there. At the moment, Blender thinks this is just an emission. I'm going to add a add shader. And I'm going to add a transparent shader. We're going to plug that in at the bottom. Oh no! What happened to our shape? It went away. Well, if we come over here to the material properties and we scroll down to settings, we can see blend mode needs to be on alpha blend, which is super fast. And now we can see through from both sides. Next thing we need to do is make sure this is in the middle. So we're going to go Alt, Alt G to clear location. And we'll make sure our cursor is in the center. So Shift S and cursor to world origin. Okay, so they're both in the same location. We're going to go Shift A again and add a curve. There's our curve. It's not very interesting yet. We're going to select our plane and we're going to add some modifiers now. So let's make the first modifier an array. You can see an array modifier duplicates our first plane. It's going to do that quite a lot more. So we'll go change this array to fit to curve. So it, it reads a curve and determines how many planes to fill that curve up. So get the picker, select our Bezier curve, and straight away it's going the wrong way. We'll turn off relative offset and turn on constant offset. Turn off the distance for X and we're going to use the Z value instead. Now the object is trying to fill the length of the curve with this array of images all spaced one meter apart in Blender space. I don't want it that high so let's make it 0.1. Oh well, look at that! Now we have a streak almost, although you can see in between them. And of course it's not following our path. So let's add another modifier, and this time the deform modifier curve. And let's choose the Bezier curve. Great, but wait, it's not really following the curve, is it? It's stacking up on top of the curve. So let's change the direction that it's an analyzing this, and we'll make it the Z direction. That's more like it. Now we can see that it's following the curve. If I turn off the overlay, you can see that it's following the curve of that shape. But there are too many still. 
let's change the constant offset amount so we can jam in more segments. Let's put a zero in front of our 0 0.1. Zero, enter. There we go. That's much nicer. But depending on the angle of view, you can still see in between if I turn off the overlay. What we'll do is modify the shape of our plane just a little bit so that it bends into that gap. Let's add a subdivision surface. Make it simple. Subdivide it a couple times like this. Now you can't see the effect yet, but when we distort that, we'll better put it at the top of the stack first. Why drag it up the top? And now we want to add a displace. And it's a texture displace. Let's press new for new texture and press the little texture tab button to take us to this texture tab at the bottom. We're going to change that from movie to blend and change this from linear to spherical. We'll go back to our modifier stack. It's in the wrong place though because it's trying to bend the whole thing at the wrong end. So we need to put this at the top so that each each piece gets distorted the same way. So now it bends through those gaps. Now it may be too much, so we can wind that back. You can see that we that's what we are without the distortion, and then we slowly move the distortion in to get rid of that layering effect. And if we add more arrays in there, so let's make this say 0, 5 or 0, 0, 2 you get a much denser, denser streak. What we can also do is determine the length of our Bezier curve by dragging it out and instantly the curve, the streak gets longer because our array modifier is saying duplicate that plane more times to fill up that length. Now it's also too bright at this point so let's modify the brightness here in the shader. If we go to add a hue saturation, we also get a value and we can wind down the value of the brightness like this. Okay, that's great, but say we want this light streak to animate over time. Well, we can do that by adding in a texture coordinate. Texture, whoops, let's try coordinate, there it is, and if we select the curve and we add a separate XYZ, we can take the Z value which is along the length of the curve and plug it into our brightness value. Not much has changed yet, but if we add a map range node. Let me change this to 1 and the other value to 0. Now we get to animate along the length of the curve. Oh, this value here too for our minimum value that I'm animating the length of the curve, this number is dependent on the length of the curve. So if we animate or if we stretch this curve out like this, drag it out longer, and we go back to our plane, now it takes much more time to, a larger value to drag out to the end. If you tab into the curve and put on the, press the N key for this panel on the side and choose item in edit mode, you'll notice there are other values you can modify. For example, one of them is the tilt. So you can rotate that vector of the curve and you can animate the radius, so you can make it swell up at that point. You can make a hurricane effect, I guess. Or you can make it very small and make some sort of tentacle effect. Great, but it's a little bit too bright. So why don't we add, why don't we add a curve node here after our brightness. And we can pull this down and attenuate the brightness of our image.
And if we want to animate that, let's change the analysis of the image to a box with repeat and turn up the blend value. So it's mapping the image in a slightly different manner. And what we can do is drive our rotation. So let's let's add a driver in here. So we'll type in hash frame, make sure it's lowercase, divided by mm, 50. Let's copy that and put it up here. Whoops. Need to put the hash at the front. Put another one in the Y value. Oh, that one didn't work. Take the plus off. There we go. So now you're getting a much more dynamic light streak effect. Don't forget that you can animate and modify the curve. The curve's a little bit uh, jagged here. So if we select the curve, go back into its properties, we can turn up the resolution of the preview up to 64. And that makes everything nice and smooth. Don't forget that given that you're uh, able to add any sort of texture in, you can go back to your texture paint and you can paint in other colors. So let's pick a different color to put on here. Like this. Maybe a green. I do, do find though that the thicker you make these colors, the uh, the less impressive the light streak effect tends to be. And of course, this is with a still image. You could also place video, animated video, into the source texture. One other thing to note, if you want to move the objects around, if I press G and move that around, you'll notice that they get disassociated with each other because I'm mo only moving the curve and not the image plane. What you need to do is go to your image plane, add a constraint, child of, and we make it a child of our curve. Right. So now, when I select the curve, press G, anywhere I drag that, rotate that, will be reflected on the image plane as well. That's the basics of getting light streaks in Blender. And let's do a quick render. There's our render. You can see that it took less than one second to render a 1080 by 1920 image.